Let's talk about the real reason why your serotonin is low and you may be depressed or have anxiety, okay? Now, most people know that serotonin is involved with their mood. Um, when you look this up in any medical physiology book, they don't know exactly for sure what it does, but they do know it's related to someone's mood changes. So if there's a problem with serotonin, okay, it can really affect your mood, behaviors, and a lot of other things, okay? There are also people who take SSRIs, okay? That stands for selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Basically, they're medications that allow you to not absorb serotonin and allow for more serotonin to be used by your body, okay? Because normally you have these uptake or um, kind of receptors that absorb serotonin once it's being released, so it inactivates serotonin. If you inhibit that, you're going to have more serotonin available. These are medications and they have side effects. And let me just give you my disclaimer right now. Anything that I say, check with your doctor first before implementing, okay? All this information is based on my opinion and some of the studies down below. But there are some really bad side effects with SSRIs. Number one, suicide thoughts and suicide actions. Number two, manic episodes. You might have excessive energy. Well, that's actually not too bad compared to the other side effects, but you also might have excessive happiness, which again, I don't know why someone would have a problem with that. But the main side effect is this, and I'm gonna pull this up. Close to 100% of people who take antidepressants experience some form of sexual side effects. There's this condition called post-SSRI sexual dysfunction. And this is a really terrible thing because it can cause genital numbness, almost to the effect that it feels like someone is using an anesthetic or some type of nerve deadening agent. So basically your genitals have no more feeling People also experience zero libido. They feel kind of uh, wooden and a lack of emotion. Some people don't experience the, the emotion of love and others just get no pleasure from erections or orgasms or anything involved with the sexual act. Not to mention erectile dysfunction. The problem is that this could last for decades, okay? now. There's this other thing that I found when I was looking at this. It's called discontinuation syndrome. Now, what is that? I mean, this is basically just another, it's a nice name for withdrawals from this poison. I'm sorry, medication. Now, I read an article on this, which is basically just disgusting. I, I just have to mention something because they were taking these serious withdrawal symptoms and turning into something that is, uh, you know, just normal. So this discontinuation and change are a part of life. We all start and stop various activities, job changes, relationship changes, and so forth. And many medical treatments might have some side effects as we navigate through our depression and anxiety. Navigate through our depression and anxiety? Is that what people are trying to do? No, they're trying to get rid of depression and anxiety. They just made the serious withdrawal symptoms, which by the way, is just terrible because uh, co coming off these medications can actually exaggerate these symptoms and they could last for decades. So that being said, why are people so deficient in serotonin? That's what I wanna talk about right now. 95 plus percent of all the serotonin in your body is not actually made by your body. It's made by your good bacteria in your gut. So we are dependent on our good bacteria for serotonin and a lot of other things like our immune system. Only a very tiny percent of all the serotonin made in the body is made by your brain, okay? That's 0 0.000001. That's one, one millionth of all the serotonin is made by your brain. So you could pretty much look at that as virtually zero, right? The majority of serotonin is made by not our own bodies, but bacteria. So if anything goes wrong with our bacteria, serotonin can suffer greatly. Now, I wanna introduce you to this 
this word here called glyphosate, okay? What is glyphosate? That is a very specific herbicide. It's one of the most common herbicides, weed killers that is just all over the world right now. Almost every chemical company makes it because the patent ran out. And I wanna just explain a little bit about this, okay? In 1960, uh, it was discovered that this chemical could be used as a descaling agent. What does that mean? Basically, it's a chemical that can bind with a metal, okay, or a mineral, like manganese, for example, or zinc. So that was in 1960. And in 1969, they found that it kills plants. And then 1996, they came out with something called Roundup Ready, okay? And that's a herbicide that kills weeds. If you look up glyphosate, Roundup Ready, um, you're going to see uh, a lot of mixed reviews. You're going to see positives. You're going to see negatives. And uh, it's going to be very confusing. There's huge PR campaigns to make it appear to be safe. And basically what they say is that it's safe because it doesn't affect humans, okay? At least how it affects plants and animals because it blocks this very specific pathway called the shikimate pathway. Now, this pathway really involves enzymes. Enzymes are proteins. Enzymes always have a metal or mineral as their base, okay? And this shikimate pathway has manganese. So glyphosate basically works by binding with manganese, making this enzyme not work anymore in bacteria, in plants. Well, guess what's interesting about this? This specific enzyme, okay, makes three, actually three to four, but it's three main amino acids, tyrosine, phenylalanine, and tryptophan. Okay, tryptophan. What is tryptophan? And uh, well, you know, maybe you've heard of tryptophan as a supplement. People take it for, um, for sleep and mood and to build up their serotonin because serotonin comes from tryptophan. You can't make serotonin without tryptophan. If you block the production of tryptophan, and by the way, tryptophan is an essential amino acid. That means that our body can't make it and we must get it from another source. So I found some fascinating research relating to this chemical and lowered tryptophan and lowered serotonin amounts. So even though our bodies don't have this pathway, our microbiome is a huge part of our health and our immune system and our ability to make neurotransmitters. And you really need to consider the microbiome as another organ. You know, um, a bushel of corn used to weigh about 56 pounds, okay, in the past. Now, if you weigh a bushel of corn, it's 54 pounds. So we're missing two pounds. Where is that going? Well, since the great majority of corn is GMO, um, that means that it's been exposed to glyphosate and this enzyme has been deactivated because it's been bound with manganese. So basically this is two pounds less because we're missing two pounds of this metal or mineral manganese, which weighs about two pounds per bushel. So I believe this herbicide is really behind a problem with serotonin worldwide. Now, let's talk about what we can do about it. Is there a strategy? This is what I'm gonna recommend as a strategy. Immediately start eating organic foods. Now, does that mean that all organic foods don't have traces of glyphosate? No, but it does mean that it has less glyphosate. Uh, and I don't wanna to go too far down into that rabbit hole, but non-GMO um, does have less. But if you're looking at foods that have organic versus non-GMO, organic, has less glyphosate. The other thing I'm going to highly recommend is if you're going to get, um, you know, meats, uh, grass-fed, grass-finished, because these animals consume grains that have been exposed to glyphosate. So if you can get actually grass-fed, grass-finished meats, that's going to help you not be exposed to that herbicide as much. And of course, you know, also eggs, you know, get organic pasture-raised eggs. Number two, avoid the most common foods that are heavily sprayed with this glyphosate, soy, corn, wheat, and sugar, both beet sugar, which is the majority in the U.S., 
and also um, sugarcane. And of course, the seed oils, canola, cotton seed are heavily sprayed, not to mention the soy oil. The third thing, probiotic foods. And I'm not talking about just taking a probiotic. I'm talking about fermented foods, um, sauerkraut, kimchi, uh, fermented vegetables, kefir, very important. Because if you have sufficient microorganisms, okay, you can, to a certain degree, counter this glyphosate effect. So even though virtually everyone has glyphosate in their bodies, it's all a matter of um, dosage and concentration and certain amount. So you want to have a very healthy gut microbiome to counter this exposure to living in this environment. Number four, increase the amount of vegetables that you eat uh, because the fiber feeds the microbes that's their food. And if you have a lot of different types of vegetables, you have a more diversified uh, microbiome and that can be very beneficial to you, okay? So don't just have one vegetable over and over and over. Number five, get exposure to the sun, not to the point where you're burnt, but get regular exposure to the sun. Not only will vitamin D help depression and anxiety, in, but the infrared from the sun can increase serotonin and melatonin, okay? I mean, think about in the winter why people get depressed because they're, the sun, we're not getting the sun exposure like we do in the, in the summer months. Number six, exercise. Exercise can actually increase the conversion from tryptophan to serotonin, which is a very good thing. And also number seven, of course, this is a given, keto and intermittent fasting. Both of these actions not only avoid <laughs> these type of cereal foods and grains, but ketones generally help your brain and so does intermittent fasting. And it can definitely increase your cognitive function and your mood right off the bat. And number eight, on a regular basis, apple cider vinegar, like a tablespoon in water. Now why? Because acetic acid bacteria are also greatly affected by glyphosate, which means you'll make less acetic acid. And acetic acid really uh, is a major um, small chain fatty acid that can affect your pH in your gut. And when the pH is affected, a lot of other problems can happen. So we want enough acetic acid in our digestive system to keep the pH correct. And taking apple cider vinegar could be one extra thing that can help you. Since we're on the topic of depression and anxiety, if you haven't seen this video related to nutritional deficiencies, I think you'll enjoy it. Check it out.